Hello, this is Sidebar.com. It is cool and I like it, especially this Aurora gradient thing down here at the bottom. And today we're gonna check out how we can build it ourselves using React and Frame or Motion onto the code. So to start, I have a pretty basic setup here. I just have the section tag that's putting everything in the middle of the screen using grid, making it the size of the screen using min height screen, and then giving an overflow of hidden. I'll also note that I am using Tailwind CSS here. It is totally not required. We're not gonna do any Tailwind specific stuff here. So if you're not using Tailwind, just make something that's the size of the screen, give it an overflow of hidden, and you'll be totally fine. To create a super basic example of what we're trying to do here, I'm going to start by just adding an inline style tag on my section. And then inside of my inline style tag, I'm going to add a background image. And then we're going to set that background image to a radial gradient. If you've never actually used a radial gradient before, you can think of it the same way that you would think about a linear gradient, just instead of in a line, it is in a circle. The actual arguments that you pass in are also very similar to a linear gradient. The first argument is going to be kind of the position and the size of our gradient. So for my example, we can just start with something very basic by saying we want it 100% of the width and 100% of the height. And we can just center it by saying at 50%, 50%. We can then just give it some colors. So let's just say white to red, and that should give us something on the screen here. Cool, so that does not particularly attractive to look at. So let's make this at least a little bit nicer by adding some better colors. Instead of white, I'm going to use this hex color, which is kind of the background space color that I picked for this. And the red is actually fine, but instead of that, I'm gonna use the color that I used in the actual example, which is this hex color right here. And now we've got our radial gradient. So obviously this is not exactly what we want. What we really want is we wanna move the center of this circle up to the top of the screen. So let's start by doing that. What we're saying right now is our radius starts at 50%, 50%, so left 50%, top 50%. So if we just change this top one to 0%, it will move the circle up to the top of the screen. Now I also want to move this circle down a little bit. I don't want to smoothly transition all the way through the screen. I only want it to start that transition a little bit lower on the screen. So what we can do to fix that is right after our first color here, we can say 50% here as well. That should give us a little bit more space. And finally, we can just increase the size of this a little bit to buff it out. So instead of 100%, Let's try 125%. Now that is looking pretty good. We just have our little Aurora gradient down here at the bottom. So I think it's time to actually animate these values. I'm gonna start by importing motion from frame or motion. If you haven't already added this, just yarn add or npm install frame or motion. And we'll go on our section right here and turn this into a motion dot section. If you've ever used frame or motion before, you're probably used to using it in a way that's something like this. So instead of style, I'll say animate. And then we can just add keyframes for our background image here. So I could just say we wanna go from this radial gradient to this radial gradient and just make it some other color. And this would totally work, but it's not actually how I wanna do this because for our example, I'm gonna take the same color and I'm gonna apply it to a couple of different elements. That may not make sense right at the moment, but it will here in a second. So instead of doing this how I'm doing it right now, I'm gonna just copy this value that I have right here for my radial gradient. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. I'm gonna turn our animate back into a style tag. And then I'm gonna define our background image value up here. So we can just say const background image. And I'm gonna set that equal to a value that I'm going to get from the use motion template hook, which you'll also be able to import from Framer Motion. Now the use motion template hook allows you to create template literals, like normal string template literals, but pass in motion values to them. Motion value is like Framer Motion's base animatable value. So I'll drop in our radial gradient to this, click save, and we should still have this looking exactly the same way. But instead of actually passing in our color right here, I'm going to change that into a variable that I'm going to call color. Now, before I define color, I'm gonna actually create a list of colors up here at the top. And these are gonna be the different colors that we're gonna animate through. I just grabbed these colors by finding some random picture on the internet of space and then picking a couple of random colors colors out of the image, but use the ones that I have, use whatever colors you want. It really does not matter. Once we actually have this in here, we can define our value for color using the use motion value hook, and then just passing it in one of our values for color. Saving this, it'll probably be a different color. Yeah, we have this green color now, but this looks like it's still working. Now, all we actually need to do to get our Aurora effect is to take this color variable right here and animate it through all of these different color stops. The way that I'm going to do that instead of using normal keyframes is by coming up to the top here and importing animate from frame or motion. The animate function just allows you to directly animate values like this color value right here. So to do that, I'm gonna come below my background image and I'm going to open up a use effect. This use effect does not need any dependencies in its dependency array. And then we can call our animate function like this. The first argument to our animate function is just going to be that color variable. The second argument is going to be our list of colors. This can be a single value or a list of values like we have here. And then finally, we just need to add our transition. So for my transition, I want an ease of ease ease in out. I'll give it a duration of 10 seconds as well as a repeat of infinity. So it repeats 
infinitely. That's probably pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, I wanna add a repeat, not delay, a repeat type of mirror so that it goes from this color all the way to the right color and then goes back through our list from right to left. Saving this down and giving it a second, we should see it animating through our colors. So that is really cool. This is exactly what we're looking for. I wanna take this one step further though and kind of create a full hero section out of this. We're not gonna actually walk through all of the markup for this just because it's not particularly interesting. So if you want exactly what I've got here, you can grab it from my website or we'll do a really quick overview of it right here. So inside of my motion section, I've just added an additional div that just has a couple of different copy elements inside of it. This one's kind of like a little chip tab that you're seeing up there at the top. Then I have this H1 that just has some text in it as well as a P tag that has some text in it. And then most importantly, this button that I have down here. So taking a look at this button, which is we can actually look at it on the screen over here. I want to add a couple of things to this. So what I want is I want to have both a border and a box shadow that follow the same color as this Aurora gradient that we have right here. This is the exact reason that I did this as a motion template like this and just animated the color because this way I can take the same color and apply it to different styles. So by example, I can come under my background image and drop in a couple of other values for both border and box shadow. And both of these are just defining our border values. So one pixel solid, whatever the current color is. And then same with our box shadow, zero pixels, four pixels, 24 pixels of whatever our color is. And then all that we need to do is take these values that we have right here and then go back down to our button. And then on our button, we'll open up another style tag like this and just drop in those values for border and box shadow. And now we should see that the button is also animating using the same colors as the background. Now, this is very cool. I do have one additional thing that I just want to toss in here really for myself more than anything. That is, I want to actually add some stars kind of twinkling in the background here. And the way that we're going to do this is using 3JS and a package called Dre. So first I'm going to collapse my div that I have right here just to get that out of the way. Then I'm gonna come up to my imports and below by base imports, I'm gonna import two more values, one called canvas. This is coming from react three slash fiber and then one called stars. This is coming from react three slash Dre. So if you wanna follow along with this, just import these two packages or install these two packages and then import them and you should be able to do what I'm doing here to actually make this work back down in my markup. We'll come right below our div with all of our copy in it and make one more div. This div can have a couple of class names. If you're using normal CSS, just gonna have to add the same styles. So I want a position of absolute, an inset of zero to make it take up the full size of the screen and a Z index of zero so that it sits behind our copy, which has a Z index of 10 right here. And literally all that we need to do to add these twinkling stars to this is start by opening up a canvas, which is the import that we get from React 3 Fiber. And the stars component is from a package called React 3 Dre that gives us a bunch of really useful helpers for 3JS. And one of those helpers that I found is literally just this component called stars, which we just imported. We can drop that right in. Essentially what I've got here, I pulled directly from their documentation. They have a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can use that's kind of just pre-built for you for stuff like this. I'm not gonna go over every single one of these values. I'll let you play around with those on your own. And honestly, I don't know exactly how all of them work. I just kind of grabbed this and tossed it in. <laughs> but if we save that, we should see that we now have these nice twinkling little stars all scattered throughout our scene. Now everything together looks like this.